Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and today I'm going over Torn Armor, updated guide slash review for 2023 as this armor experienced a fair share of nerf buff cycle from Bethesda. So how it is now, how can you get it, how to use it? So let's start from the basics. If you don't have this armor, you can purchase it from Vault 79 Secret Service Vendor Rex. And to get access to him, you will need to complete the Vault Raid. As well, Minerva is currently selling it if you are watching this video straight after release. But if Minerva is not selling it now for you, if you are watching it later, Rex always has it. Just a little bit more expensive. The full set of torn armor, all the pieces, 4k gold bullion. There is as well a scout armor mask. You should know this is just a cosmetic. You don't need it for torn armor functionality. And what is torn armor func functionality? If you have five pieces equipped, your targets, your melee targets will bleed. I mean... Okay, again, whoever you will hit with melee weapon will suffer bleed damage. Whatever enemy will hit you with melee attack will suffer bleed damage. That's how it works. As well, there is a little bit of sneaking bonus, harder to detect while sneaking. Now to don't go over sneaking too much, how this armor classified is second best the best for sneaking the absolute best is covert scout armor due to the fact it has bonus on every single piece for sneaking this one is second best which means it's a little bit be better than regular scout armor with shadowed mods as you can notice i'm not using shadowed mods as i'm not sneaking with this armor at this moment shadowed is the best for sneaking for this guide to be complete, you need to know you cannot learn modifications for scout armor. If you don't know where to get those, the modifications for scout armor, you can purchase from Enclave. And I will show you how to get to the proper vendor. You go through this entrance. In order to get to this particular vendor, you need full access to Enclave facilities. So you need to be a high rank official of Enclave. If you are not and you don't want to grind your ranks in Enclave, you will need to ask someone else to purchase those mods for you and sell them to you. And you can see now where I'm running. This is a command center in Enclave. You need to get through this wing and there is Armory. This vendor, Modus Armory Terminal, will sell those mods under the mods tab and as you can see those are all mods for scout armor those mods work on torn armor you need to buy one mod per one modification you want to do it's not a plan this mod after you use it will be consumed so you need to buy enough of the mods you want to modify your scout armor in the way you want it to be now, how the scout armor works, if you open a stat page, you can actually see how much bleed damage you will be doing. Torn armor, bleed damage 250. Translation, it's 25 damage per second over 10 seconds. This bleed damage does not stack. If you attack again the target that is already bleeding, it will refresh the duration up to the 10 seconds. It does not stack. Consecutive attacks only refresh the duration. One more information about bleed damage. Bleed damage cannot be stopped by any form of armor or damage mitigation, which makes it very useful for boss fights, as boss will be bleeding for 250 damage every 10 seconds, no matter amount of armor and damage mitigation that there is on boss 
in the same time it will do huge damage to players even the ones spec for pvp as they will suffer 25 health loss per second no matter what still not the best form to pvp as you will need to get close to them so that's not optimal in practice is it worth it let me demonstrate every time you will deal with low level enemies like those small rats they bite you they kill themselves they have very low health so basically they are dead in matter of seconds after a bite which is very useful now if we face enemies that are a little bit higher level than those forest enemies let's face some ghouls oh and i can show you on this legendary treasure hunter how much bleed damage there is let me unequip the weapon so i will punch it you can see i punch it now you can see the drain that's the health drain the health he's losing is from the bleed and it's over 10 seconds simultaneously it's a really fun way of checking how much actual health enemy has as you know every time you punch it there is a little bit damage from a punch and flat 250 damage from the bleeder so you punch again that's only a little bit damage from the punch there is a bleeder damage so you can figure out that this particular treasure hunter has close to 1k health a little bit under and you can see those ghouls attacking me they die they slowly kill themselves by attacking me so i punch oh i punch the ghoul i want to punch a treasure hunter i punch the treasure hunter and he's draining health i think he's like 750 health total treasure hunters are quite beefy health wise and this bleed damage is like the only way to monitor amount of health enemies have there is no better way to test it in the game without digging into game files how much health enemies have as you can check their armor with awareness perk but you cannot check how much health they have there is no value on the health bar so i need to punch this guy one more time they punch him or the ghoul no i punch the ghoul no stop stop no don't go don't go i need your loot there it is <laughs> there it is that's my loot and look at those ghouls i can basically wait possibly for all those ghouls to die if i sit here they will attack me and they will slowly die so you can see how the bleed damage work it is actually very useful it is not perfect with automatic melee weapons like it used to be in the past but it's still good the problem is if i use weapon like a chainsaw this weapon is doing insane amount of damage attacking like 30 times per second and the bleed damage is relatively slow as it takes time but in the scenario when there is a lot of enemies around me that are all hitting me every hit on me it's 250 damage over time back on them so yeah i can effortlessly kill them all by just talking to you and waiting see all those dead ghouls i didn't attack a single one of those they are attacking me now about the crafting and legendary effects that you can get on this armor this is unfortunately a little bit tricky and that will be the last topic of this video let me just deal with those remaining ghouls first person is better for chainsaw yeah this didn't change you can see chainsaw is wrecking havoc on them way faster <laughs> way faster than anything else can let me take that stuff now the crafting part if you want to buy ingredients to craft those armor pieces you need to visit rusty peak interior and my apologies for talking about this the last i don't know why i did that but it's too late now so what you need is one legendary module per craft and 10 volt steel per craft so it is expensive as you, you can see 50 script per module and 10 of those so 100 script per volt steel 150 script per craft the good thing is you don't need any legendary course 
So that's a good thing. You don't need any legendary cores. And quick warning before you start crafting. Make sure that you will equip armorer minimum at rank 2. If you don't do that, the cost of vault steel will go up to 13 per craft. So you will overpay greatly. Then when you go under the crafting, you will find a new category when you well well learn those plans. This is vault 94 armor. I have solar and thorn to choose from. If I want to craft thorn, I would need vault steel 10, some rubber, some plastic, one legendary module and leather. So luckily the scrap is common and easy to farm. It's easy to farm leather, plastic and rubber. So that's a good news. And you don't need any legendary cores. In the same time, you cannot re-roll those pieces, the crafted ones. So there is no option for that. You always need to craft a new piece to get a new roll. It is always guaranteed to be a free star. And yes, you can get an yielding set. You absolutely can. I'm just using full health characters. So I'm not using this one. An yielding is really good. If I would try to modify it, as you can see, there is no option to reroll legendary. I cannot learn any mods, so if I want to change, I only see the option what I previously purchased from Enclave and what's in my stash box. The mods I have in my stash box are showing here. The mods that I didn't purchase will not even show. And there is no number, as you can see. So this is a pure indication. You cannot learn any mods. And that will be probably everything you need to know about the Torn Armor set. It is equivalent by the stats, by your basic stats, is it is equivalent of regular Scout Armor. All Scout Armors are made equal and Torn Armor is a Scout Armor with special legendary effect for a set and nice look with all those plants and fungi. So this is everything you need to know about Torn Armor. If you still have any questions, please let me know in comment section and I will do my best to address those. And now as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.